Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah. It's J-Man Monero. J-Man Speaks coming to you live. That's right. We got J-Man's Ed Talks number 26. We're on the 24th, but this is the 26th J-Man Ed Talks. Today, we're talking about pricing homes during a pandemic in a changing market. Uh, we have Melanie Jackson McLean, Reback Hall of Fame instructor, national speaker, instructor, appraiser, and real estate practitioner. We thank you so much for being with us today, Melanie. Thank you, Jamie, and it's great to be with you. <laughs> so let's just get right into it. We know that we're in a pandemic here. Uh, depending what state you're watching from, you may or may not be quarantined and have to stay in or do your business remotely. Uh, so, so where do you want to start? I'll, I'll let you kind well, of. Let's start with what's been very uh, much in everyone's mind, who are appraisers. My state of Pennsylvania is quarantined. We are shut down. Our governor has said real estate and real estate services are not essential. We are not to be open. There's a close sign on my office door. For appraisers, this leads to the question of, can I do an inspection on a home? And no, according to the governor, you cannot. Now, in a lot of states, people can apply for a waiver for certain things. So, for example, if an appraiser is appraising unimproved land, there really should not be a big deal about them going out to take a picture of land. Uh, if an appraiser is doing new construction, which is land, look at the land, but then do the plans and specs, that should be okay. But Fannie Mae's response to this, which we all hoped we were going to get is this, they are going to allow appraisers to do exterior only inspections. So what does this look like? Well, it looks like we have a number of sources that we can use to get information about a property. We have the courthouse records, which we know are not always right. And this is going to upset some appraisers because every appraiser I know measures houses, the good ones do. And a lot of times the dimensions on the courthouse record are wrong. So that's an issue for a lot of us. The second thing is you're talking to a homeowner who may not see things the way you do. I'll give you an example. The phrase remodeled kitchen means so many things to so many people. <laughs> but you have consumers who think, well, shoot, I put down a new floor, a new countertop, I remodeled it. Right. I'm going through a kitchen remodel as we speak. Thank goodness my son is doing it. He can right. be in my house. We went down to the walls. That's a remodel. So that's an issue there. Um, but also Fannie Mae has changed the limiting conditions appraisers have. Those are the things the appraiser signs at the end of the report that say things like, I made an interior inspection of the property. They're changing that. The other thing for appraisers is, I believe this comes under an extraordinary assumption. The extraordinary assumption you are making is that the interior of the home is as it has been described to you. Now, you have other resources. It may have been listed at one time. There may be historical data in your MLS. But again, you bought the house three years ago. It looked like this. I don't know what it looks like now unless you show me. Right. So let's, let's back up a second because we didn't get into your background just to kind of edify your position and, and your expertise. Uh, give them a little bit of your background. How long have you been appraising? And, and some of the stuff that we talk about, it's not specific to Pennsylvania. It's national so that everybody realizes. Okay. Um, well, I like to say I got in real estate in the BC era, which was before computer. So I remember paper books and all of that good stuff. That also means I've lived through more than one financial crisis. I got in real estate just in time for the SNL bailout at the end of the 70s. I'm second generation real estate, so I grew up with it. Um, if I can jump there for a minute, is that okay, Jay man Jump while you like. So... The SNL bailout, and there's probably some people on this call who weren't even born then, but people who remember it. Appraisers got blamed for what happened, and I don't think that was fair. And I'm not saying there were no appraisals that were done incorrectly and that there were no appraisers who did not cross the line, because unfortunately, in every industry, people do that. But when the savings and loans went under, the scapegoat for a lot of the people in Congress was the appraisers. And that got us FIREA and got us certification and everything else. Now, fast forward to a more recent event, beginning 2006, the mortgage meltdown. So that market was hyperinflated in many parts of the country, 
Florida was a poster child for, oh my gosh, during the lead up to that, in every appraisal class I taught, the appraisers were all saying, this cannot last forever and it's not going to end well. And it was not going to end well and it didn't end well. Here's the problem you have as an appraiser. An appraisal is a snapshot in time. Let me pull up a stat I love to use in courses and I got it from the Florida Realtors website. 2000 to 2004, average price of a single family home in Florida went up 147%, which is insane. Now, lots of problems with that, not the least of which is median income did not rise, so people were being shut out of the market. Right. But the whole thing with an appraisal being a snapshot in time. When an appraiser appraised a house in Florida in 2005 for X amount of dollars, and all of their comparable data indicated that was market value, that's a snapshot. Yeah, it was completely different in 2007, 2008. Okay. <laughs> and then fast forward to, to kind of what, what we're seeing now. Seeing today. And, and here's where we are. We don't know how this is going to shake out. Number one, we don't know when it's going to end. Number two, we don't know who's going to have a job, who's not going to have a job. There are going to be people who will lose their houses. You and I know that. And it, it breaks my heart because they are going to lose their houses unless some kind of aid or something is done. You have the idea of demand. So when we go back to normal, and I'm not sure normal is ever going to look the same. Yeah, the new normal. Yeah, I would expect consumers to be cautious. Kind of like your great great grandparents, my great great grandparents lived through the Great Depression. That made those people really cautious if you ever knew any of them. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, my dad was right on the cusp of it. He was born. He had those tendencies from his parents where, like, they, they saved it. That just lifelong. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And I think after you live through something like this, you're not going to take things for granted as much. And so I don't know, and I'll be watching with the rest of us. What happens to our housing market? The people who were going to do move up purchases, let us say, do they kind of go, ooh, I think I'm just gonna hunker down here, right. stay where I am? Don't know. Now you're always gonna have houses that come on the market for other reasons that have nothing to do with this. Somebody passes away, uh, somebody gets a divorce, somebody goes in a nursing home, things like that. So I we've, see we have a question. Yeah, uh, it's the good of great pictures. Yes, Andy's right. Yeah, the great yeah. pictures really help. And Andy, on the brokerage side of my business, the, the letter I sent to my owners who have not yet sold, they're not under contract, is this. We're continuing to market your home virtually. We had our professional photographer in there. We've got these great pictures out there for people to see. And my agents are still getting calls. People know they can't see houses, but they still have questions because they're looking online. Yeah, so the, the you know more important than ever before. We've always said that make make sure you have quite high quality photos. But now, more important than ever before, depending on where you are. Uh, there's somebody who just commented here that that New York just deemed appraisals appraisers as essential services. So good um, for New York. If that's yeah. the case, though, I mean, do do you have? Because this brings up a great option. Sure, now I can go in a house, but. As an appraiser, do you have the choice? Do you have like a, a waiver yourself where you could say, look it, I love what I do, but I don't wanna die for it. I think you always have the ability to protect yourself and protect your health. So you and I were chatting before this started. I was in South Dakota and I got home a week ago this past Sunday. This coming Sunday will be 14 days since I've been in a, an airport. I've pretty much been self-quarantined. I wouldn't go into somebody's house right now because right. I don't know if I'm carrying this silly virus or it's not silly, it's a nasty virus. So that would be my point of view. I do know in a social media group I'm on, and this was very disheartening, an appraiser scheduled an appointment, went to the house and there was someone in bed, very sick, and they had not told her. That's just irresponsible. If you've got somebody sick in your house, you don't let other people come in during this pandemic. Right. So I, I guess in that position, would you be able to use the waiver where you can do the drive by and still be like satisfied? I don't well, know if the, about if your the client. 
Yeah, if the client has ordered an interior, you just have to get back to them and say, I'm sorry, I'm not comfortable doing interiors. I have another person that I was uh, saw a comment again in a social media group, and she said, look, my daycare is closed. I've got two small children. I'm not going into houses. I don't want to bring anything home. That's a personal choice. Clearly, if I turn the job down, I don't get the revenue because I didn't do the appraisal. But I think most of us say our health is worth more than immediate money. 100%. But do you think that the, the banks would be a little bit more lenient than any other time because of the extenuating circumstances? If they had right. more than one appraiser say, mm -hmm. I'm not going to because, you know, can I still do a drive by? Would that be to your satisfaction? But we know how banks you could are. ask, and I hate to sound cynical, and it's going to sound cynical, but it's true. Probably if they can find another warm body who will go in that house and who is an appraiser, they'll take that person and do bad for you. Okay. And the appraisers know what I'm talking about. All right. So I, I guess in, in that example, if you are the listing agent and you're trying to do what's in the best interest of the seller, just try to practice everything that you can to be safe. Maybe leave all the doors open, the lights on, all the ca everything. Disinfect. That you can, yeah. The disinfect so that the appraiser can come in like they're a surgeon and walk through the house and take whatever photos they have, but not touch anything and then disinfect I, after. I know a lot of appraisers are using disposable gloves. You and I are traveling instructors. I don't know about you, Jay, man. There is always a can of Lysol spray in my suitcase. I get to a hotel room, I spray everything. And then I leave while it dries. There you go. That's my can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I, if, if I had to travel anytime soon, I think I would, I, I'm not even joking. I'd probably wear like a hazmat suit. I'm just kind of, I feel like oh, every, yeah. I went to the grocery store the other day. I feel like everybody's a carrier and I don't want to be there. I just, you know, like you said, protecting your families. My fingertips are raw from washing my hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we have a couple of good questions here. Um, and label the pictures in the MLS by room. Yes. Uh, Erica Rose Siegel. She says, uh, I'm curious, are photographers now essential? I don't think so. I don't think so. And so that's, if you didn't get good pictures before, I'm not sure you can get them in. I don't know how good. Hey, there's Beth Graham. Hi, Beth. She's a friend of mine from Michigan. She's another appraiser, another instructor. Um, yeah. Label them by room is very important. Um, and then she also has a question. Do we suggest we take new listings right now? I can't answer that. Neither can Melanie. We can't make suggestions as whether you should take new listings. Uh, so is, let, let me just throw a what if out. Yeah. Let's say a month ago you went to the house, you measured it, you did all your work. You actually did your contract, but you post dated it a month because I don't know, they wanted to get all their stuff out of there. Now they call you up and say, Hey, I'm ready to go live. Well, theoretically you could, I might try to talk you out of it because I can't get buyers in your house, but it's your call. But notice I had so many exceptions to that. I'm not going over there to measure. I'm not going over to, with my photographer. I'm not doing all the things I would normally do. Yeah, I, my opinion, and this has nothing to do with anything and don't take it with any, as any expert advice, but my opinion is if you talk to them, you've had the relationship, you could still take the listing and either post date it or a to be determined list date, you know, whatever your manager or manager yeah. broker's best advice is and just let the client know, like, I, I care about you and your circumstance and your safety. Uh, you know, we're going to have to put this on because even if you put it on, then who's going to show it because we can't be showing houses. You, you know what popped up. into my mind? Clear cooperation. <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, you could like, depending on the MLS, you have delayed showings. You have, there's a number of different ways you can do it. Every state's different. Cause we have people watching so far. I've seen from like Arizona, New York city, Pennsylvania, you said Michigan, you know, so every, every state's going to be different. But yeah. I think if you have that relationship with the client, they're going to appreciate the fact that you care about their safety. It's not about making, making the sale or selling the listing. Unless it's an, an extenuating circumstance and then you need somebody who's going to, you know, if you're in New York or Pennsylvania, somebody who's going to buy it sight unseen, no inspection, because now uh, inspectors yesterday were deemed unessential, so they can't go and do the right. inspection. Um, probably all cash or they could have financing, I guess, if, now that the appraiser can get in there. And that dwindles your, your buyer pool down to, oh, yeah. you know, next to nothing. So. Are you doing what's in the best interest of the seller? That's right. And I see Beth Graham has a comment, and I think my MLS has done this as well. They've disabled the showing option. 
and they've disabled showing time. They're basically saying, you know, if you we use showing time, I, it's one of many yeah. that people use, but now everything's blocked. So even if you were to try to do a showing now, the, there are people who buy properties sight unseen and we all know right. they do. And and think about one, I got a call as I was walking in the office this morning and I sent him to my daughter-in-law because I did, didn't even have my computer up. But what we have is a large tract of land with a really nasty beat up old farmhouse on it. Appraiser language, the improvement no longer contributes to value, meaning burn this house down or tear it down or whatever. That's a property I could see selling. You know, the guy can get out of his car, walk around the land. This is in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. Right, and right. we can email him the map. We can email him a lot of information. And he might say, you know what? Yeah, I'm good. I want to buy this. Here's my offer. Right. Yeah, absolutely. We have, so we have Jonathan Cole from, from Maryland. He said, I just listed a property in, in MD. I'm guessing that's Maryland, right? Mar MD. That's who my wants, friend, Jonathan. Okay. So, you know, him, he's, who wants to get on the market. She wants it gone, and we said, let's go. So I, I don't think Maryland's under quarantine like we are in New York and Pennsylvania yet, are they? I'm not sure. I'm not Jonathan, an I thought Maryland was under quarantine. Am I crazy? But he's he's saying that he did list it. He's not saying that he necessarily went into the house. Yeah. Um, and, and again, like there are, there are sellers who have extenuating circumstances that yeah. have to sell. They don't want the property to sit there vacant for an undetermined amount of time. Like, I mean, if I have a vacant on a lockbox property, like you said, that maybe you've 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 examined ahead of time or or before all this began, maybe. But I, I'm not. Again, it's a personal decision. You guys make your own choices. We're just here to provide you with data and facts to help you make the right choice. I think Nathan has a really good suggestion. He says, as competitive as the market has been for buyers. Couldn't this be an opportunity for some buyers to secure a home subject to physical inspection with the next number of days? I think, and hi, Nathan, it's good to see you. I see him in class sometimes. I think that's a great idea. I, and, you know, we've kind of done that in the past. I know I've had relocation clients in the past that one spouse has been looking at the houses, the other one isn't there. And they've said, I'm doing a contract, but it's subject to my spouse or partner or whoever looking at this house and seeing if it's okay. So... And I like Nathan's profile picture. He's got his child there with him. Yeah, I got to look that up. Uh, we have some, one from Erica Rose Siegel here again. Um, and this goes into the, if, you're, if your state is in a state of emergency, uh, you know, like New York State is, we are not supposed to be cold calling anybody. So, uh, er, you know, one of Erica's strategies when she lists a house, she calls the neighborhood and lets them know that there's a property on the market. But even if you're calling to say, hey, if you want any questions answered, a cold call is a cold call. If you've never met that person before, talk to them in any way, don't call them. I think it's, you know, I think it's a great time, and this is just, again, my opinion, to call your sphere, to call your clients, call your pendings for sure, and reassure them mm -hmm. of what you can do to get, the, you know, get, get it closed again, depending where you are. But um, call your clients, call your sphere and say, hey, we're in a time like we've never seen. And I'm here to help you and answer any questions. If you were thinking of putting your house on the market sometime, someday, now's a great time to get it ready, right? I yeah, exactly. Else. So, and I love Andy Levine's comment. She, homeowner took pictures, staged it, and have three offers. This is awesome. I have to share with you that my son is in construction and he had to go to Lowe's. And the paint people said they have never been this busy. So I think what's happening is people are sitting around their houses looking at their walls going, I've always hated that color. I'm going to change it. So I do think this gives a lot of people a chance to do that sprucing up if they were going to put their house on the market. I mean, spring cleaning, paint your walls, organize your closets. Right. Yeah. I'm, we had a we had a stager on uh, last week and she's doing consults virtually where somebody could like do a FaceTime and, and walk through the yeah. house. And then she could say, okay, you should paint this, move that, organize this, rather than having to go you know, physically to the house. Again. I think we're very creative in this business, don't you? Oh, 100%. I see Candy has a comment. I actually composed a letter for my clients that I emailed to them about the situation, but I also called them as well. They do want to hear our voices mm -hmm. and Again, being a BC realtor from before computer, I've seen bad things happen before and we've come through them and we're going to come through this. We're going to be fine. 
we can figure this out. All right. So Erica, who is that staged? If you just go back to my, my page under the Ed Talks, uh, I think we interviewed her like last Thursday. It says uh, virtual staging consults. And I think what Andy Levine is referring to, there are people who do virtual staging, meaning it, it's computer created in a way where they can put staging in a house that way. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to be sure again with article 12 and, 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 making sure you disclose that this isn't actually what the property looks like. Right. The virtual staging can make it look fantastic, but it's it's just a, a digital representation of what the property can look like. Um, let's, we have a lot of questions here, but let's- so I, Kathy's I, question about the settlement agency being closed. And I, I cannot answer that state specific. Attorneys and title companies are supposed to be closed in Pennsylvania, but one of our title companies found an exception and a workaround. There will be a closing this Friday. No one from my office is attending. Title clerk is title company representative is going to meet the buyer and seller at the house that's being purchased. She's going to mail the checks to everyone else. I That's all I can tell you, Kathy. I would ask your state association. I don't know what state you're in. And yeah, I know, see, I know see in, what's going on. In New York, in New York the, the attorneys are essential. Um, uh, but the banks, depending on the bank, I don't know, the mortgage companies may not be just check, check with your local municipality to be sure. Well, yes. in both New York and Pennsylvania state associations have come out with a specific Extended. form to extend closings that your state association again, has that available to you. And you want to take a look at that. Let's, let's get into the, how we can, if you're in a state like yours and others who will probably be in the same case soon if there's drive-by appraisals that are gonna be done, what can we do to help you make an accurate or better determination of value as far as the listings concerned, the curb appeal? I think we had talked about you know putting something in the remarks. So why don't we talk about that? Okay, well, I mean, first of all, there's no such thing as too many pictures in MLS, in my opinion, never has been any such thing as too many pictures. Beth Graham is right, label those pictures so we know what we're looking at. Understand no house is perfect. So, you know, I, I realize everyone's inclination is, well, I'm not gonna show you the family room because it's really dated and ugly. Right. Show me the family room. And the basement. Over, yeah, pe people sell houses that are not perfect every day of the week because we never saw a perfect one. If you have the ability to measure your house the way an appraiser does, do so, but talk to the appraiser, make sure you're doing it right. So, yeah. New York State real estate specific banks are still open. I, mean, I can't see all the questions. New messages. Adam, don't worry. Okay. Um, in regards to, so you said, this is a great time because you know they, they've been doing this with investment properties for a long time where they would take a picture of the basement because the investor wants to see the basement because they might be purchasing it, purchasing sight unseen. The basement, the utilities, the furnace, maybe even the the attic or if there's an attic crawl space, maybe put that on there yeah. as well. Would that help you? Because Yes, and all four sides and the neighborhood shot in each direction. Okay, what's what's near this? I mean, it could be a great residential view one way, but then you know what? There's a highway at the other end of the street and we need to know that. Although with Google Earth and the mapping appraisers have, believe me, we know if there's a highway near your house. Okay. And then we, we had talked about putting in the remarks because, again, depending on if you decide to list a property or maybe you had a property listed now that you are doing temporarily off market or whatever the different statuses that your MLS might have in, in, in your local area, um, put something in the remarks about, about that, right? Because we don't – right. You only know what's in the MLS. You don't know the, the circumstances that might be behind it and why an extended days on market. Talk a little well, bit. and you and I had talked beforehand about days on market, and that's an indicator appraisers always look at. So I myself, when this is over, and let's say I have a comp, and it was on the market for 90 days because they're going to count every day. But I know that let's just say 45 of those days it was not being shown for whatever reason. I'm gonna put a comment in my remarks. Now, I love to talk to agents when I have my appraiser hat on, so I will probably also call the agent and ask, before the quarantine went into effect, did your seller 
request that you stop showing were they concerned about the virus? Because we have people who are elderly, people who are in that population that is more vulnerable. Certainly, if your 86-year-old grandmother's house is on the market, you're probably going to say to her, you would have said to her a month ago, I don't think it's a good idea, Grammy, let all these people in your house. Right. Yeah, so, I, you know, again, if for us, it's uh, if we do temporarily off market, the days on market still ticks. And so just putting yeah. in there, hey, we went temporarily off market or we stopped showing on this date. We started showing again on this date. Right. So the adjusted that, you know, not all, I think they, I think I'm lobbying for that and adjusted days on market. I they, think that's a good idea. And I think maybe our MLS committees need to get on the stick and provide that for us. No, because then even you, the old trick you have that folks will take it off the market and then relist it as a new listing to try to make it refreshed, pretending like you guys don't have access. Like we don't know that there's a history button on the MLS. Come on, <laughs> folks, get with the program. Yeah, that's um, you know, so we got Jonathan D. Coles again said, yeah, Box Brownie is a great company. They're an NAR affiliate. Uh, they'll they'll do floor plans from your sketch. Um, Home Depot will do it as well, but also uh, companies like Matterport. If you've if you've heard of yes. that, hopefully there's somebody in your area that has Matterport because that will give an immersive virtual tour where they can walk through, but it'll also give a floor plan. It also gives the dollhouse view. I mean, it it is much more than your virtual tours from 10 years ago where you do the zoomy pictures in and out of, of, of the pictures of the property with classical music. Uh, it's yeah. much, much better, more immersive. I see Andy's comment and I, the only thing that comes to my mind is that notary rules vary from state to state. I don't mm -hmm. think we have a federal virtual notary in place. Do you know if I'm right, J-Man? Uh, I think New York just did a waiver because we had a question about this the other day. I had a client who had had a document signed for a city of Rochester grant where I live. And it said it had to be, and it was just as they did the quarantine and, the, and we couldn't find a notary. And then the next day there was a waiver that they could do virtual notarizing. I don't know how that works exactly, but I, I know that in New York state, and I imagine the other states have to follow. Well, but it is state specific. So I would, again, I think the best resource for any realtor on this webinar, or whatever we're calling this, this event, this chat, your, your state association, they're going to be on top of what's going on in your state. Um, one of the problems we have with social media is we have some great people out there, but people will post a question in social media to a nationwide real estate agents group and they right. get state specific answers. That right. are not specific to their state. Well, and here's here's what I'll say to, to whoever might be watching this live or on the playback. Like if you're going to disseminate any kind of information, please always cite the source. Like if I don't have a specific source, I'm gonna say, well, in my opinion or my interpretation of it, or here's the resource that I got from NAR or my local board or the state state specific association. Because we're getting updates daily if not like mm -hmm. yesterday we had one in the morning then we had one like in in the evening and i get updates from other states as well like every state is very much on top of this oh, yeah minute by minute it's not something they're ignoring for sure and realtors boy our associations are doing a great job for us thank you to all of them uh erica says so brand new listing if somebody's interested in putting on the market today and they can't get professional photography because they're in the state of new york how shall we proceed Tell them to take their camera out. Hopefully they have a wide angle. Sam, here's a, this is, this has been sitting on my desk here for a year or more when I used to take my own pictures. Uh, but this is a Samsung. You want to make sure it's a wide angle lens that's on there. Um, you know, or maybe order one and send it to them via Amazon a few days later, have them take their own pictures. I mean, at this point, um, because it wouldn't make sense. The photographers are not supposed to be working. They're not essential. Same thing for the sign installer, same thing for everybody else that we use is kind of like our subcontractors, if you will. They're not necessarily employees, but they're people that help us throughout the transaction are not supposed to be working. So yeah. it, makes, it makes it kind of challenging. Oh boy. Um, anything else that we talked about? We said drive. By. Oh, here's the one thing. So if, if you are doing the drive by uh, valuation of the properties, is there anything as realtors that we can instruct our clients to make that better, like address curb appeal, make it look you as, as possible or what? 
should always have your house showing good curb appeal, in my humble opinion. And again, get us pictures and be prepared to take a phone call from the appraiser who might ask questions. Sometimes the questions we ask don't, homeowners don't really understand why we're asking them, but trust me, we have a reason for them. So I guess, yeah. Curb appeal is more as important as ever before. I know I've seen appraisals when they're drive by and says, you make certain assumptions based upon what the curb appeal might look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. If it's neat and tidy and updated and maintained, you're going to then assume that the interior is similar condition. Right. I'm not not to use appraiser yeah. verbiage, but am I right more or less? Like Pretty much. But here's the thing I'll say to everyone listening, whether you're an agent or an appraiser, we've all been in a house that has surprised us either way. Looks great from the outside. Mm, they have 18 cats. Yeah. Wow. Yes. <laughs> or it doesn't look inspiring from the outside and inside is fabulous because these people were like, well, if I do the outside, the tax people will raise my taxes. <laughs> I've had that too. Like, why don't you do something about your curb appeal? No, man, the town's going to think I have a nice house and my assessment goes up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've seen that too. Uh, so we're getting right around the 30 minute mark. So we try to try to keep to the time limit and we're getting a lot of interaction here. Anything else that you can add, you know, as far as uh, we didn't really touch on this, but I, I guess we can, you know, using realtor property resource would be good for agents as mm-hmm. far as being able to do uh, a remote valuation. Let's do exactly. that five minutes or less, because I feel like that's a, that's a great okay. tool. Okay, So I love RPR and every time I u- do a CMA, because I still list properties, I use RPR. Now I tell agents RPR is the greatest thing in the world because it's got the algorithms of the technology of an automated valuation model, which is not 100% bad, but is somewhat faulty in certain areas combined with the expertise of the agent. So with RPR, you get to pick your comps. Now, all the automated valuation models out there, the biggest flaw I see with them, whether we're talking Zillow or whoever, they don't separate out arms length transactions. They just scrape the public data. So if a sale went, if I sold my house to my son for half of market value, um, RPR would conclude that my neighborhood has just gone downhill like crazy because the sale price, they wouldn't say, oh, it's McLean to McLean. They must be related. Maybe we shouldn't use this. So number one, you as an agent are very well equipped from your device, your laptop, whatever you're using to go in and look at the available comparables. And you know what is really comparable to that property in terms of location, size, style, amenities. It's something we do every day. So you put the comps in, then you do an adjustment. If you haven't been in the house, you're gonna have a conversation with the owner. You're going to get them to send you pictures. Remember in RPR, you can do two kinds of an analysis. You can do a qualitative one where you simply slide the bar across, better than, worse than, about the same. Or a quantitative one where you actually make a dollar adjustment. RPR is one of the greatest tools ever. I could go on about RPR all day long. Yeah, so I, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to post a PDF here in the comments of what a report might look like so you guys can understand. It. And it, you, you, if you know me well enough, you know that I'm a tech guy, but this is one of the only things that I will print for the seller because it's worth its weight. I want to grab – I don't have anything thick enough, but it's worth its weight because you have this 84 pages – and in this, maybe you could mail it to them. Out of the water, absolutely. Yeah. And they're like, "Wow!" And if they're like a engineer, architect, appraiser, personality type, they will love you. They're like, "Oh, look at this data! Oh, look at the charts!" They they will love you forever. They do. They do. Okay. Um, one more thing, I think that will help them to use RPR is that when you're having that conversation with the sellers, you want to make sure that you ask them the improvements that were done. How much did they cost? And how long ago were they made? Because you can make line item adjustments based on that. It, it, it'll it take like if they spent $20,000 on the kitchen in 2010, right, which is a newer kitchen, then it'll it'll take that and multiplies it with the cost versus value report to figure out the, the ROI and then depreciates it over time. And I have to just say one more thing, Jamie, and if it's okay, Absolutely. the battle we fight every day in real estate is cost does not equal value. 
because every single one of us goes to a listing appointment and the seller says, I did X and it cost me Y. And in their mind, their house is now worth Y dollars more. Well, okay, maybe they put a bowling alley in their basement. <laughs> Wasn't that special? Right. The next player doesn't want it. So, just, but you're right. RPR will do that stuff for you. And we are going to get through this. Um, last question from Erica. She says, I asked this because I feel like there's people in our state that are taking listings and if someone's not in a have to move situation right now, I'm not really sure if it makes sense to put their home in the market. If it can't be full service, we can't even promise that their buyer would. Yes. I, I mean, I, I agree. Again, it's a personal decision. They have said that we aren't supposed to be out working. We can work remotely. If somebody chooses to provide less service or remote service in some way, um, then that's you know, it, Eric, I, I see your point and you, know, you might have somebody who still wants to get it out there, whatever we follow lawful instructions. So I guess I'm going to end that. Hi, Irene, you just joined, but we're pretty much over, but this is going to be on Facebook. Yeah. So if, if you're just tuning in, Irene and anybody else, uh, the playback will be hosted on the page. Feel free to tag and share with anybody that you feel would like to be educated further in real estate. I mean, it's a great time if you're quarantined, you don't have to binge watch Netflix. You could also binge watch stuff that will help you with your real estate career once this is over and, and while we're getting through it. So thank you, Melanie, for Thank you, Jay, man. You, you're the man. <laughs> uh, I'm the man sometimes, not always, but I appreciate you being on the show and really just sharing your expertise because that's what it's all about. Bringing somebody on who's an expert, getting your opinion. And I'm sure everybody who's watching this really appreciate it. So uh, I think we're going to do one more thing in the comments. If you'd like to get a, a one sheet from Melanie, as far as things that you could do to help with the remote valuation process or anything that we've talked about together, we'll put it together for you. Just, just type MJM, her initials, MJM in the comments, and then I'll, I'll send it to you just to help you as something as a resource for future. Awesome. Years. I can do that for you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you guys for all showing up and listening. I appreciate it. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. Stay away from other people. <laughs> Bye. Bye.